everyone! Today I want to share with you guys some of my absolute favorite tips and tricks for helping your baby to sleep through the night. If you're watching this, you are probably as sleep deprived as I was, so hopefully these tips will help. And I've tried to like narrow it down through the tips and tricks that I've learned from family and friends and books and all these different resources into like five steps. There are a couple of them that have like, have, like, like steps within the steps, but like five steps. Time is precious and you need sleep. But obviously talk to your doctor first before you start any of this, just in case you have any questions or concerns and things that may um, work best for your baby. Um, but these have worked really well for me and those around me, so hopefully they help you guys too. And and if they do help, don't forget to share it with others to help spread the love and the knowledge. And um, please subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Saturday. I hope you guys like it. Give it a thumbs up if you do. And without further ado, let's get into this. So first, step number one, you're going to write everything down. This is the first step before you dive into any other thing. You want to write down exactly what's going on. You are going to write down when they wake up, when they go to sleep, when they eat, when they start playing, when they start looking like they get sleepy. How long does it take to get them to go to sleep? You're going to write all of this down, whether it's on your phone, on your computer, or on a notebook outside the door, which is what I ended up doing. And you want to do this for at least three days. You want to really get a sense of if there are any patterns or things like that, which is going to work into step number two. But you really want to take the time to just do as you normally do and figure out what is currently going on. Which brings us into step number two, which is analyze. So you are going to sit down and you're going to look at the information in front of you. How long are they napping per day? When are they napping? Are they napping a lot? Are they napping a little? Are they having one nap? Are they having seven naps? When are they falling asleep? How long are they sleeping through the night? Are they sleeping, you know, two hours at a time or an hour, 45 minutes at a time? What is going on? What is their pattern? Are they eating before they go to sleep? Are you rocking them to sleep? We want to know what exactly is going on during the day and during the night and kind of take steps into figuring out what the main sources of issue are. Step number three is research, which technically is what you're doing with this video, but I'm going to like go even further into the experts. In particular for me personally, I really like the what to expect website because for this step, I want you to figure out how long they should in general be sleeping um, per night and per nap. They usually have some really good information in terms of how long they should be sleeping through the night, if they should be sleeping through, through the night, depending on how old they are, if they were a preemie or not, what their weight is, all of those kinds of things. Again, please talk to your doctor if you have any concerns as well. But that I find is a good indication of where to start. So for me, when I was a new mom with Julia, I had no idea. I was like, it's been three months. Is she supposed to sleep through the night now? Like according to some of the people that I've been talking to, no, but I had honestly no idea. So that was a really good starting point for me to be like, okay, so at this point she can be sleeping this long without nursing. And then she should be having X number of naps per day. And this is how long they should be or how many hours per day they should be napping. Just stuff like that. Just to kind of give you a baseline to work off of. You are going to tailor this to your baby and your baby's needs and your needs because every baby is going to be very different. So that's just a good starting point though. Now on to the fun stuff. Step four, action. And this part, we are going to be breaking it out into a couple of different steps. So part A, we are gonna be talking about the room in general and what it should be looking like. So for me, what I have found to be the most helpful and create the most successful environment for sleep is to create a pitch black, really, really dark room. Regardless if they're napping at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., it's going to be the exact same amount of light in either situation because you want them to understand when they are very small that when it's dark, you sleep. So for us, we got blackout blinds that just pulled down um, and they are really, really good as well as blackout drapes. I found the combination to be the best. And then you want to get a white noise machine. Some experts say that it helps to um, mimic the sounds and things that they hear while in utero. Um, I find it just helps to, you know, cancel out any of the noise that's kind of going around in the house. It just um, creates this nice even sound. I really like it for myself when I sleep, if I'm gonna be honest. Just make sure that it's not too close to the crib. It's not up too high because you wanna be um, really careful with baby's little, little ears and eardrums. So just keep that in mind as well. And then also check the temperature in the room. When you're waking up, is your baby's, are their fingers and feet really cold? Are they sweating? Are they really clammy and hot? And you wanna try and adjust the temperature to the best of your abilities. So whether it is turning on a fan or getting one of those temperature control heaters that are, you know, safe in a room and then turn off automatically when you hit a certain temperature, things like that. You want to just set the temperature of the room to a nice, 
even average temperature. You don't want it too hot. You don't want it too cold. Just something that's going to be nice and relaxing to sleep in. Part B is creating sort of mini nap and bedtime routines. This is a really good starting point for those of you that are starting from scratch and don't really know where to begin. So for me personally, when it's nap time for Luke, I'll say, okay, Luke, it's nap time. Like I'll have the same pitch. I will say the same thing. He'll wave to everyone in the room, even if there's no one in the room to wave to, but he understands. I will lay him down in my arms. We'll walk up the stairs. We'll talk softly. He knows what's coming and that's really important for children. They really thrive off of routine is what I found. And then we'll go and we'll sit down in the rocking chair and we'll read a couple of stories. So usually it's one or two small books. And then I will tell him that it is bedtime now and I'll use the exact same rhythmic noises, the exact same pitch and tone so it's the same thing every single time and I will lay him down in my arms we'll sing a song while I go and I turn on the noise machine and I close the drapes and the blinds and then I'll lay him down in his bed and I'll say the exact same thing as I walk out of the room and close the door it doesn't really matter what you do as long as it's fairly short and very consistent you want to make sure that your baby understands that now we are leading up into nap time and now we are going to sleep there needs to be some level of consistency and communication and routine to this particular step. And that brings me into part C, which is a particular pattern that I picked up from a book. I don't remember what the book is called, but I will put it in the info bar below for you guys in case you're interested in it. A great, great read. There was a point in this book that I learned um, really early on with Julia, I remember, and it just, it dawned on me that, oh, sleep doesn't come naturally to babies, does it? Like this is something that they, this is something that they need to learn how to do and do on their own because it's going to serve them better as they get older. They need to be able to adapt and learn how to do it themselves. So the pattern that they talk about is to have sleep and then eat and then play and then sleep and then eat and then play. This will really help them to learn to not use food as a crutch to help them fall asleep, but really learning to do it themselves. And you're going to take all these A, B, and C steps and you're going to work them into their schedule over the course of, again, three or four days. It doesn't need to be all at once. This is something that it's gonna work really well one day and not so well the next day. And you just wanna sort of get into a rhythm, get them used to the idea that things are changing up and switching up and becoming a little bit more permanent in their routineness. Um, and just sort of introduce these things over time. So now on to step number five, routine. Now that you and your baby know kind of what to expect, you've developed a little bit of a routine, you have a rough idea of when they're getting tired, now it's time to create the routine. And I will say this right from the get-go, that this routine is going to continually change as your baby grows and gets bigger and changes their amount of sleep that they have and number of naps and all that fun stuff. It's just, this is going to be a, a working schedule. Most babies love a good routine. They love to know what to expect. They love the consistency, but getting them into that routine, that that's change and babies don't like change. Now, if they're young babies, I've had a lot of success with the pick up, put down method because they're still learning that when you leave a room, you are not gone forever. And it's really important to earn their trust. And I will say if they're under the age of, I, I say three months and under, I would just kind of be at their beck and call. They need to learn to trust you as their parent to know that you are going to come and you're going to help them when they need your help. Now, that they're older, um, depending on how old they are, I like the pick up put down method. So take a look at that if you need some more information on it. But essentially it's when they cry, you pick them up. When they stop crying, you put them down as soon as they stop crying. And then you put them in their crib and then you keep doing that until they're, they're too tired to argue with you anymore. And that way you are minimizing the amount of crying that they're doing, but you're also not allowing them to fall asleep in your arms. You know what I mean? So that's going to take some work. It's going to take a lot of patience from you. It is going to take a lot of work, but over the course of time, you will get there. For older babies, what works best for me is I go in and I do my normal routine. I put them down, I give them a kiss, I say goodnight or whatever, and then I leave. And at first, Luke and Julia hated it. So immediately they start to wail. Within 30 seconds, I will go back inside the door. I don't open the door for more than like 30 seconds or so. And I will repeat the goodnight thing. They are pausing and they're crying because they're like, oh, mom's back, but I'm not. I say my goodnights and I close the door. And then if they're still crying after a minute, I go and I do the exact same thing back and forth. So it's um, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes. For me, like some books say like, 
keep going 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, blah, 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 blah. If at 10 minutes they're still not happy, I will usually go in and check if their diaper is dirty, if they're hungry, if there's other issues going on, um, just to make sure they're okay. I'll pick them up, I'll give them a cuddle, sort of like a, a reset, if you will. Um, that works better for me um, personally, but everyone's gonna have differing levels of what they're comfortable with as a mom or as a parent. You can also try the, the parent swapping back and forth so you don't lose your sanity. So Chris and I would go like back and forth and, and you know, it was a good way also for Luke and Julia to learn how to go to sleep with either of us. So it, it allows for a little bit more flexibility and allows you to keep your mind in check. And if it doesn't work guys, don't stress out. It took me like six months to get Luke to a comfortable spot where he's sleeping through the night. It's not gonna always come really naturally to some babies. There's one of my girlfriends has this little girl who started sleeping through the night at one month. And then there's Julie who started sleeping through the night at eight months and Luke at a year. So like every baby is going to be a little bit different and I like to be personally more flexible to the baby, but again, everyone's gonna have a differing level of what they're comfortable with. Remember to keep trying, keep introducing that same consistent routine over and over, and if they're not comfortable with it, try again at the next nap or at nighttime or try and figure out, okay, what aren't they responding to? Is their diaper always dirty? Are they always hungry? Do I need to feed them a little snack before we go upstairs for nap time? Just something like that. You wanna fiddle with it to make sure that it's comfortable for you and something that you feel comfortable confident with going into for your baby. And lastly, I kind of going to get into some extra like tips and tricks and things that I have learned through um, both babies and they don't necessarily fit into one of the five steps. So I'm just going to put them all here. Now I mentioned this earlier, but I want to reiterate it. One tip that I really highly recommend is for the first three months, let them do their thing. You don't need to introduce a routine right now. This is the time for them to learn to trust you as their mom, that you are going to feed them when they need to be fed and change them when they need to be changed, cuddle them when they need cuddles. That is really important and establishing that bond, I feel is very, very important. So I really highly recommend try not to push any sort of routine. You can certainly encourage them to feel comfortable in their crib or their bassinet or wherever they're sleeping but don't feel like you need to force a routine when they're that little. Another thing I learned is called a dream feed. And that's something that um, I learned actually with, I know it was with Julia and I did that a lot with Luke as well. And it's where I would go in approximately an hour or so before I knew Luke would wake up or Julia um, in the like late evening, sort of like the 10, 11 o'clock range. I would go in an hour before I knew they would wake up to feed and I would feed them while they were still sleeping. So I would pick them up really carefully out of their crib, latch them to nurse, and then sit down and, and feed them for 10 minutes or whatever it was. Um, and that was that worked really well because they learned how to sleep through that particular feed and they still felt full and they weren't waking up and it just encouraged them to sleep more during the night. Now I wanna share something with you guys that was such a struggle for me with Luke because Julia was a great sleeper for the most part. Once she started sleeping through the night, she was a dream and she still is like she will sleep through everything she has like a two and a half three hour nap in the middle of the day like she is just a perfect little sleeper and I love it Luke on the other hand is and was and will continue to be a challenge. And the issue that I was having with him is that he was way too busy learning new things th during the day that he did not want to nurse, he did not want to eat anything, and he wanted to eat only at night. And it was such a struggle for me because I was like, okay, well I can't starve him all night when he's actually physically hungry and I just could not force him to feed. He, he just would not have any of it. I would try and sit in a dark room. I would do anything and everything to try and get him to eat at the like time and the consistency and the routine that I wanted him to eat. And he just was flat out refusing food. I'm like, what are we gonna do? It was so frustrating because I couldn't find any information on this and there was nothing, like no resources that could help me until I came across one thing in a book and I wanna share it with you guys because if you are going through this, you know how frustrating it is. And this is the best thing ever because you don't allow your child to um, cry during the night. So this is basically what it is. I'm gonna try and explain it in the best way I possibly can but bear with me, you may, you may have to re, like, like 
rewind this a couple of times. So first of all, have a general idea of when your baby is waking up to feed throughout the night and how long they're feeding for. So, um, so for example, I think Luke would wake up at 11 and two and six in the morning to feed and would fall asleep after that and just want to sleep for the rest of the time. And then I would kind of calculate approximately how long he wanted to nurse for at each of these little increments. So sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's seven minutes or three minutes. It kind of depended if it was a, uh, a comfort nurse or not. Now that you have a general sense of when they are waking up and how long they are feeding for, now you're gonna go in and you are going to go in and feed them. Set your an alarm for yourself for an hour before you know when they're going to wake up. You're going to sneak in and you are going to feed them for a 10 minute or whatever amount of time that they would normally feed for increment of time and then you're going to put them down you're going to leave the room very quietly. Then the following night you are going to shave off two minutes off of each of the feeds and so each night you're going to continue to take off another two minutes until you have eliminated all of those feeds. Now I found um, with Luke he was a little bit more um, difficult to wean off of like say the um, I think it was like the 11 o'clock one. So I would continue to dream feed him for that one while I eliminated the other ones first. Now sometimes they will kind of protest but they're still really sleepy so it doesn't, like they're totally fine and it's just that you just put them down, walk out of the room and they should fall asleep on their own and like go back to bed and do their own thing. Um, and that worked really, really well for me because then without him understanding why, he was suddenly like waking up in the morning and be like, I'm starving. And so I would bring him downstairs and he would actually eat food and he was actually eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, everything. And he would eat more and more every single day because he didn't realize it, but he wasn't eating as much at night. So he was actually getting used to eating during the day. And it was the best thing ever. He started sleeping through the night and it was amazing. Obviously there are always going to be setbacks with every single baby and they're going to regress a little bit and they're going to go back into trying to do the nighttime feeds and sometimes they're growing. So you want to make sure that you're um, feeding them if they're, if they're growing and if they're actually hungry, you feed your baby. Like don't ever take away food if they're hungry and you can always try again the next night. But um, that just, it was a, such a game changer for me. So hopefully that works really well for you guys if you're struggling with something similar to myself. But yeah, that was a huge, huge thing that helped. A tip that I have for the toddlers out there um, and for the, the moms of said toddlers is to limit the number of choices that they have uh, for bedtime because if you're like me, your, your toddler likes to procrastinate and try and wiggle in as many additional things into their bedtime routine as humanly possible. From having to go to the bathroom, to sore throat, to need a specific toy, like I've heard all of them. So what I recommend is a two-prong options kind of a thing. They don't need a choice for every single thing, but if they get a choice, let's say it's their pajamas, you can wear these pajamas or these pajamas. And my favorite is if they take too much time, it's like, okay, you're gonna choose right now or mommy's gonna choose, which is the end of all discussions because obviously she doesn't want mom to choose. Mom is always gonna choose the wrong one. And then when she comes at me with like, I have to go to the potty and da 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 da, like, okay, we're gonna put you on the potty. I, I never assume that my child is lying to me. We'll put her on the potty. Um, but she doesn't get extra songs. She doesn't get extra stories. She doesn't get all these extra things. This is going to the potty. You have a couple of minutes to figure that stuff out and then you're going back to bed. And I find limiting those number of choices just makes the whole like getting them into bed and off to bed a lot more efficient and effective. So hopefully that helps you as well. And then lastly, I mentioned it before, but I think it's really important to reiterate that babies are constantly growing and changing and adapting. And so your routine is going to grow, change and adapt as well. And that's okay. And that's part of being a parent is learning how to shift and change those things as they grow and get older. And there are going to be frustrating moments. There are going to be regressions and that's okay. Moms all go through it and don't worry. Don't stress about it. Just keep trying again or try something new or talk to someone or check out the comment section. If you guys have any tips and tricks and things that have worked for you, leave them in the comment section and maybe we can help each other out. Just know that you are not alone doing this. Everyone has been going through this. Everyone has their ups and downs and you will eventually find a rhythm that works really well for you and your family. And I hope that it comes soon. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with other moms. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you girls. Mwah.